There are about a million things you could talk about when you talk about the farmer's market and its role in sustaining a local food economy. So I'm going to try to really bring it down to just a couple key points. Um, when we decided to talk about all these different issues this evening, one of the things that all of us speakers uh, sort of kept coming back to is what can you walk away with as an access point? Um, so what can you do when you leave this room that will get you more in touch with our local food economy than you probably already are in some way? Um, so I'm just going to touch on a few things. Um, when I was thinking about sustainability and um, the market, I think there's some general idea about how the market functions as a sustaining point for a local food economy. Um, so I actually asked a different question. I asked, what sustains the Ann Arbor farmer's market? Um, and I kind of came up with three key ingredients, if you will. So um, I'm sure there's a million others, but these are, my, these are my ingredients for this evening. So number one, it's the people. Um, it's myself, it's the other employees, uh, the people who volunteer their time to clean up the market at different points in the year. It's all of the vendors and all of their employees as well, both on farms, in kitchens, um, at the market, who, uh, who bring us all this wonderful food. Um, and then finally, it's all of you um, who come to shop at the market, to ask good questions, to um, really engage with our local food economy at the market. Um, and the third, or excuse me, the second, the second sort of sustaining point for me beyond people is the food itself. Um, so we really operate a market that the average driving distance for the farmer is about an hour. That's pretty local. That's pretty awesome. Um, so the, the food itself is coming from about as close as you can get it. You have to go a little farther if you want fish. But um, we do pretty well in that regard. Um, and the third thing that sustains us is really the investment, not just of your, your money to farmers or the farmers' time in their fields and their investment um, in what they do, uh, but also the investment of knowledge um, that we share with each other about what our local food system entails and how that food comes from farms and kitchens to our farmer's market. So the things that I think sustain the market are people, food, and the investment of time um, and money into our, into our market space. Use my handy clicker. Um, so as probably many of you know, we host a variety of businesses um, at our market, from food to craft, um, from prepared food to raw vegetables. Um, and I think that's a sustaining point for what makes our market work and what makes markets across um, Washtenaw County work. We have a, an amazing number of farmers markets just within Ann Arbor. Um, and you're going to hear about one of those a little bit later on, too. Um, but for instance, we have a new vendor who's going to be starting this summer, um, and they're, they're actually Vellum Restaurant that just opened on Main Street. They make their own butter using Calder Dairy, which is also local, and they're going to feature that particular product at our market um, on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So it's kind of another, um, a, another way to feature and support local businesses outside of perhaps their traditional um, front door entrance. It's also another way to feature a dairy farmer or a produce vendor within a local restaurant scene, and then also to bring that back to the farmer's market so you can access that local food in a multiple um, in multiple settings. So we have someone like that who's relatively new, relatively young, relatively small. Um, everything up to Alex Nemeth, who's a third generation, you know, apple orchard farmer. So we really host a variety of sizes. As Yusuf mentioned earlier, we have a number of vendors who participate through the cottage food law. So they're able to make certain um, goods in their own home if they're not able to purchase space to or rent space to operate in a commercial kitchen. Um, so we're really giving people an opportunity to tap in as a vendor um, from a number of different perspectives and in a number of different ways. I think this is pretty self-evident, but um, we serve as a central access point to local food, both as I said, um, whether it's getting something from a local restaurant out into the community in a different way, um, or actually getting you to shop at a different location than you might otherwise. We serve as one of the access points for you to find food that's grown as close to your home as possible. Um, who shops here? Parents, students, students from U of M to students in K through 12. Um, local businesses shop here for their food, um, whether that's local restaurants 
or um, you know, local employees of local businesses who pick up their groceries on the way home. Um, we service a variety of different people in our market, um, and that access point is really key for that, that variety of, of people to tap into. Another thing that sustains our market, as I said, is the people and the investment of knowledge. So um, my big key takeaway for you all this evening is to ask good questions. Um, and when you come to the market to think about the what, where, why, when, hows of how that food or that product got to the market and what, um, what is involved in getting it there. Um, so I would encourage you to ask, who are you? of the vendor, who are you and how did you get here? Um, you will probably learn some very amazing stories. Um, there are lots of people who sell food at our market who didn't start out as a farmer, um, or maybe they did. So um, I've been really blessed to share in those stories and I encourage you to ask those vendors about who they are and where they come from. Secondly, what do you grow and what do you make um, if it's not just produce? And um, what variety is it? You know, what are the ingredients? What goes into making this food product what it is? That will tell you a lot about your local food source. Um, not all local food is created equally. So it's, it's important to ask, you know, what you're getting from the, from the vendor. Where is it made or where is it grown? We can also tell you this in our office if you'd like to come ask. Um, but you can also find out a little bit more about where the farm is situated. Anytime I'm out on country roads, I think, oh, that's so-and-so's house and that's so-and-so's greenhouse and it's nice to feel a little bit more connected to the people that you're purchasing the food from. Um, when was this grown? It could be a storage crop. It could be something that they picked two hours before they stuck it in the truck, so that probably means they got up in the middle of the night to do it. Um, is it a perennial plant? Is it an annual? How does it grow? Those are really great things to ask because these are the people who have the intimate knowledge um, to get you to enjoy that food in the most delicious way or in a way you've never had it before um, or to make sure that your plant doesn't die in the middle of the summer. I know I get a lot of um, really valuable information from all of our vendors. Um, and, and finally, how was it grown? What are the systems that were used on your farm to make it grow? What's your irrigation like? How do you deal with pests? You know, things like that. That's really important to getting to know a little bit more about what makes the particular farm or the kitchen work the way it does. Um, so I really encourage you, you don't maybe have to ask all of those to every vendor, but um, you know, pick one, pick your question that you think is really important, um, and feel free to ask it. I think that that's a really important part of, of really investing and sustaining a local food system, is knowing what it entails. And my final point, um, is sort of the why question. Why is it important to ask all of these things? Um, continuing to know the answers to those kinds of questions at a place like our farmers markets helps to continue the cycle of investment in our local community. It helps for all of us to become more invested because we know the answers to those questions. We know how much work goes into creating those local foods for us to, to consume. Um, and I, I guess I would also like to offer that I encourage conversations over label wars. So really another point of asking questions is not to get caught up in rhetoric, but to find out the real pieces of information from our individual growers. Um, there's a lot of labels, and I think it's a lot to work through, and so I think a really great way to tap in to maybe learn more about a particular label or a particular growing practice is to learn that from the vendor themselves. They are, uh, as I said, <clears throat> Excuse me. As I said, they are a wealth of knowledge, and that really helps to create good dialogues that support us to make, as Yusuf was saying, good policies going forward, um, because they are really based on, on investment in the community and on knowledge, and not just on going to the grocery store, buying something that has six labels, and going home. So labels help us, but I think it's really important to engage in conversation. So I would recommend, you know, ask good questions, and I think the answers will take you a very long way. So um, I will leave it at that and I look forward to talking to you more a little later. Thank you. <laughs>